please, please welcome Mark. Great, uh, thank you for the introduction and for the opportunity to be here today. I'd like to very briefly uh, talk about tape in the cloud. Uh, so why tape? Why is tape interesting again? Well, really, it's two trends. First of all, data continues to grow exponentially, while at the same time, recently, aerial density scaling of HDD has really dramatically slowed down. And that aerial density scaling is critical because historically, that's what's driven the dollars per terabyte or the, the cost scaling of HDD. So a slowdown in aerial density scaling translates to a slowdown in the cost scaling. And the net result is the data center is starting to get out of balance. We're creating data at a much faster rate than we can afford to store it, at least if we want to store all of it on HDD. Now, fortunately, a large fraction of the data is actually cold data. It hasn't been accessed in a long time. And some of that cold data tolerates much longer latencies than, than the hot data. And so for that fraction of data that tolerates uh, longer latencies, tape technology is an interesting alternative that provides a lower total cost of ownership. Now, I have to admit, I've been working on tape technology for a long time, and so I'm probably very biased about my ideas of the benefits of the technology. So I'd like to take a look at what some of the hyperscaler companies think about tape. So back in 2006, Microsoft was rather adamant that tape technology was dead. But now, fast forward a decade to 2015, and they've actually changed their ideas. They're now making statements like, all cloud vendors will be using tape and using it at a level never seen before. So what's changed? Um, why is tape suddenly interesting again? I think it's really three factors. First of all, cost. Tape provides the lowest total cost of ownership for storing large volumes of data. A study from Microsoft in 2016 found about a 3.7 times lower cost for tape compared to HDD. Second of all, scaling. Although HDD scaling has slowed down dramatically, tape has huge potential to continue scaling for many years to come. The most recent INSIC tape technology roadmap projects continued capacity scaling with a 40% compound annual growth rate, basically doubling capacity every two years for the next 10 years. And finally, security. Tape has a natural air gap. We have built-in on-the-fly encryption. And recently, we even demonstrated a prototype tape drive with quantum computing safe encryption technology. But of all three of those things, I think scaling is really the most important because scaling, this potential to continue scaling, means that the cost advantages that tape have today are set to grow exponentially in the future. Now, these projections are actually more than just projections. My team in 2017 was able to demonstrate recording on tape at 201 gigabits per square inch. That translates to a potential cartridge capacity of 330 terabytes. You compare that to the 20 terabyte cartridges we have currently shipping in products, it really represents demonstrated capability to continue scaling this technology for many generations to come. So why isn't tape more widely used? I think there's a perception that tape is hard to use. But historically, that may have been true. But it's really an outdated notion. There's been a huge amount of progress in, in tape technology. First, modern tape systems are highly automated. We have robotic systems for loading and unloading cartridges. There's also they scale to more than 350 petabytes in a single library. And there's been a lot of work in developing software to seamlessly integrate disk and tape-based infrastructure under a common namespace. Now, initially, that software was proprietary. But recently, there's also been a lot of development around open source software for the integration of disk and tape-based systems. For example, LTFS Data Management, or DM for short, uh, enables the integration of disk and tape for file storage for open file systems like XFS under a common namespace. And similarly, Swift HLM, or high latency media, enables the integration of disk and tape for object storage, again, with a common namespace seamlessly enabling the, the migration of data between those two tiers. Now, if you'd like to learn more about these two projects, please come to our oral presentation tomorrow in the OCP symposium or, or visit our poster. And with that, I'd like to conclude with a quote from Mark Twain and to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Mark. I appreciate that. Um, I noticed one of your earlier slides. Uh, you had indicated that um, from Microsoft back in the day that uh, tape was dead. Uh, so it's interesting to note that about a year and a half ago, 
we started a sub-project around tape archival, and the sub-project lead is Microsoft. So things do come full circle. Thanks again, Mark. Thank Appreciate you. it. All right.